is a wonderful year. This is a year of the fullness of joy. And this month is a month of new beginning. And we pray as you begin new things, your joy will be full to the, to the brim in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to read two verses in the Bible. Psalm 92 verses 1 to 5. Psalm 92 verses 1 to 5. He said, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the, unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto the name of Almost I, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. And upon an instrument of ten strings, and upon the sultry, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad throughout thy work, and will triumph in the works of thy hands. Verse 5, he said, O oh Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. Praise the Lord. Psalm 50, verse 23, you can give me the New Living Translation of that one, or that New Living Translation of NIV of uh, Psalm 50. Sorry. Yes. But giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep to my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. Leave that one. So this morning, I just want to encourage us for about 20 minutes on what I call sacrifice of thanksgiving. Sacrifice of thanksgiving. You know, in this place, he said that, but giving thanks is a sacrifice. And when you do so, what does he say? He say, you honor him. And when you honor God, God will honor you. When you honor God, God will honor you. You use only one thing to honor God, but God will use many things to honor you. He's talking about thanksgiving that you used to honor him. He now say in return, he can use many things to honor you. He will honor you in every aspect of your life. So what are we saying in SS here is that he's telling you that when this year is a year that it's not a matter of thanksgiving, it's something that is ordinary. No. Sacrifice of thanksgiving. As you know, sacrifice is not something that is ordinary. There is preparation. It involves time. It costs you something that you might have to do, you have to abandon. You know those people in the world, when you want to do sacrifice, when they ask them to do sacrifice, they give them time, they give them ingredients, everything they are going to use. And they will do it at that particular because they will tell you that if you don't do it at this part time of the day, that thing may not work. So which means that when you are talking about sacrifice, you know that sacrifice involves something that will cost you. So Thanksgiving is not something that you have to relegate this year. You don't have to relegate it to the background. It's something that has to be at the forefront of your life. And that's a question that, usually, that comes to my mind along with this, this verse. That we, we could ask yourself and I could ask myself. And the question now is that why am I still alive today? Why am I still alive today? And I want to give you the two answers to that question. The answer number one is that you are alive today because God has kept you alive. You are alive today because of many things that God has done in your life. I'm alive today because there are many situations that will have consumed you, but God did not allow you to consume you. There are many situations whereby you thought that, oh, it's, it's, uh, uh, end has come. It may not be to your life, but may think the end has come to my career. End has come to what I'm taking. End has come to all my effort. End has come to this. But God said, no. What you thought that end has come is just a beginning of a new thing to do, and it begins to unfold it to you. And here today, you begin to give praise to the Almighty God. You are alive today because God has saved you from a lot of calamities. Some of them you know. But some of them you don't even know. 
Because some of them, because you are a treasure, each one of us that is sitting here is a treasure. And when you are a treasure, you are a target for devil. Because you are a treasure and you are a target for devil, what happens? Even when you sleep, when you don't do anything, devil is constantly attacking you. When you don't even do anything, they want to attack you. You want to attack your career, you want to attack your life, you want to attack your children, you want to attack your spouse, you want to attack anything that has to do with you, because the only way he can do so, the only way he can take you down, is to attack you so that you can deny God and can cut you off from God. But because God is with you, he has not allowed devil to succeed concerning that area. And this is a constant thing that happens every day. That is why your thanksgiving has to be every day. Intentional thanksgiving. Intentional thanksgiving. Yes, some of us really wake up with, thank you Jesus that I wake up this morning. That one may be a, a refrain. It's a good thing. But it may be become a refrain in our mouth. Because I don't know whether you have entered a bus with somebody, even with somebody who's not a Christian before, and anything wants to happen to the boss. Even before you know it, they begin to charge Jesus. I don't know whether you have seen it before. They are not even Christian. They, but why? They are not charging Jesus because they believe that, but it's a common refrain that whenever anything happens, everybody say, oh, Jesus. So your thanksgiving is not going to be, oh, I thank you, hope, oh, because I wake up today. You have to have a intentional way of saying, God, I thank you. It's everyday things that you have to do. Many battles. Many battles. Many things that you, you never even imagine. Even some of them from unexpected quarters. Some people you are doing good for them. Some of you, you even there's some situation whereby somebody who's your who even who, who work against your progress, who does not even want you to succeed, maybe one the person that is closer closer to you, you don't even know. Even it may be your COVID and you are revealing all your secrets. This is what I want to do, this is what I want to do. And then he begin to plot many things against what you want to do, and God did not even allow you to succeed. Innocently, you are just doing your thing. Not because of you, not because you have knowledge, not because you have anything, not because you know, but because God is with you. So your career is alive today. Your senses is alive today. Your body is alive today. There are many people that we eat things we don't even know. Some of us have eaten poison, we don't even know. And that person did not even work. You talk about all this, you know, when you when you read it, they've said that majority of the diseases that we have in this world, majority of them come from what we eat. Because that's something you may eat, it may work well. So why is it that most of the things you have been eating does not work contrary to your system? If you have the time to visit hospital and you see those who are medical doctors, I'm not going to tell you that some diseases you cannot even. Some, some disease you cannot even, when they mention the disease, you don't even know how to pronounce it. Maybe that's why the medical doctor, the, the right is not always clear. They will have to write in a different way. Because they don't want you to understand. So what am I saying? It says that you will see different type of things that happen in that way and God save you. Some of you, some of you, you may not even grow up in the country we are today now. You have been eating, maybe you are the one that you have been eating different type of food for the past 40 years, 30 years of your life. You relocated to another country. You begin to eat burger, you begin to eat leaf, you begin to eat different things in your life. And everything begins to work, sink into your life without any problem. Is it not God? It's God. We are not some people who, who are born where you are. Some of them will eat something, they will say, I have allergy. Like my wife, we say that what is, we don't even know what is allergy now, where we, some of us come from. But you, you see God, how God has helped you. When some people say, I have allergy to this, I have allergy, I say, what is the type of allergy? I eat anything that comes my way, and God will make it to work. It's God. You sleep, you do a simple location, I remember, I never even know, I remember when we were in uh, South Africa, uh, one broadcaster wasn't very popular then. That person, he see, he see work in the morning like this, and he wake up and left office, and they say within some few minutes, he says, die. What happened? 
They say because he just have a blood clot. They say that is the thing that he has a blood clot. Somebody is working there. If that is not treated on time in the vein, and before you know it, the person will die. And how many times you go, you have blood clots. Even when we are young, we go, we play football, we play different type of thing. And you, you will do variable and you have. And that will just go. It's God. So you are alive today because God is on your side. He's watching over you, watching everything. And that is why this year I want you to take it upon you that God has a plan for you. And that is why you must give thanks to him every day. It's a sacrifice. And the second part of that question that why I'm in my life today is that there are some unfinished assignments that God has given unto you. So, God has given you an assignment. It may be because there are some souls who are there, who have, who are, who have lost, and God assignment to God is given to you that you are the one to bring them to the kingdom of God. So you cannot die now. It may be a situation because of your spouse. Your spouse needs you. So you cannot die young. Some of them is because your children, without you, the divine destiny, the way God has written the script of your children, you are part of that script. If anything happens to you, that script may not be able to come to pass. So as a result, God said that he's going to keep you alive. It may be because of somebody in your office, maybe because of even some of people, you know, we, like somebody said, when, during the, uh, when we are doing the three days uh, prayer, somebody said that, yes, we pray about divine helpers, which is true, that God should send divine helpers to us. But have you ever thought of it also, that you, you are a divine helper to another person? So God may keep you alive because somebody without you, the history of somebody's life will not be complete. Because you are a channel of blessing to bless others. So what does it mean? It means that if God has given you that assignment, that means that anything that God has given unto you, maybe your spouse, your children, your friend, your work, those people come your way, you must live a life that gives thanks to God. You must treat them in the way that we give thanks to the Almighty God. So you can see in both ways for what God has done, for what he's going to do and what he wants to use you, you must live a life of thanksgiving. And that is why I say that it's a sacrifice of thanksgiving. So when I talk about sacrifice, I'm talking about it in two different ways. Number one, when you are talking about sacrifice, I talk about the sacrifice that involves you that will cost you some things. Your time, your resources, it will cost you to be able to do so. Number two is that when you are talking about sacrifice, it's a solemn endeavor. A sacrifice is something that makes you to connect to God. So your thanksgiving makes you to connect to God. And that is one of the things. If some of us, one of the things I want you to know today is that because one of the benefits of that sacrifice of thanksgiving is that it makes some things in your life, even it give you the, it give you some level of connection to God. Why? It removes anger from your life. Try it. When you begin to thank the Almighty God, some of the things that make you to be angry will not make you to be angry. Try it. Some of you, some of us that are not, just try it. Say for the next seven days, I'm not going to ask God. Because something that, I'm not going to ask God, all, all my prayer is going to be thanksgiving, thanksgiving, thanksgiving. You will see before you finish that thanksgiving, most of it that make you to be angry with another person, even with, with those people, it will have gone. Because you, as you are thanking God, you begin to think about many things. Because the level that you are, that you think that is not a level that is okay, it is the level some people are even praying, fasting, they want to get there to that your level. Many things that you think that is not, it's minor. They are not minor because it's only that you think that it is minor, it's only when you see the other side. Thank God, God did not allow you to see the other side. 
When you see the other side, you will know that truly, God loves you. You don't want to see the other side. You want to see the other side of somebody because today now you are praying, I want to get a good job. You get a good job. But have you never seen somebody who gets a good job? Who has been working hard and immediately get that good job, sickness comes. And when you think he's going to survive that sickness, he died. All the thing that's worked is will to another person. Some people, as I'm talking, they cannot even eat or down. They have to use soup to give them food. But you, you can even open your fridge. You know, when you open your fridge, you see many things there. Even if you give you some rest of my dad, I'm the owner of this whole thing in this fridge. So what am I saying? They say is that with God. That's what I was telling you. That God factors in our life is what will make us to think and thank the Almighty God all the time. Every time, every day, this year. We have to increase the tempo of our thanksgiving. Thank God we are talking about a new beginning. We, know that we have to begin a new things, different from what we are doing. So if you are taking thanksgiving as an activity, Take thanksgiving today as a sacrifice. I have to make a sacrifice of thanksgiving today. So it's a daily thing, see? And you say, when you talk about thanksgiving, it's give thanks. So when you give thanks to the Almighty God, God will give something, whatever you give to God, God will multiply and give it to you and therefore. That's what it says in the Bible. You give thanks to God, God will multiply that thanks and give you blessing on their food. So that means that we have to change our attitude of asking, petition, asking, asking, asking. I'm not saying you know that. But you know that he says he knows your thoughts. He also knows the thoughts he has towards you. And as I've told us that we also pray one prayer. Even according to what that was in the book of in the Psalm, he said that, oh, Father, let my meditation of my heart be accepted unto you. That means that what is in your heart, God knows it already. <laughs> he knows it. Yes, he wants you to do your part to ask. Because at times you may not even know. So there are some things, some of us don't even know. Like I told you, if you look at your life, there are some prayers you have prayed. Which are not made for that particular time. And there are some things that you need, you don't know. And God will provide for you. So let our life this year be a life that is full of thanksgiving and that thanksgiving is a sacrifice, sacrifice that is going to take your time. Even if you cannot pray to God, God provide me this thing. Just say, God, I thank you that you have, you have provided this thing for me. I thank you because you are giving me that child. I thank you because you are giving me that job. I thank you you are giving me. What of thanking God because you want to even move closer? God, you are going to help me to be moved closer to you this year. So it is very, very important in our life. And I pray the Almighty God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I say it will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. He said in that place, when you thank him, he said when you make a sacrifice of thanksgiving, he said he honor me. There's nothing you can do to go down to honor him. Why is it that he said that? Why did he take his promise away from Eli? He said because he did not honor him. Because Prophet Eli did not honor him. So you must do everything, which means that when you were talking about honor now, it means that everything you do, the way you speak, the way you treat your wife, if you are the one that are beating your wife, don't beat your wife again. If you are the one that are beating your husband, because some women, they are very strong, they are beating their husband anyhow. Don't beat your husband though. Man, if, I, if your wife beat you, come and report to me. Hmm? Praise the Lord. At times they not beat their, with your hand, they may beat you with their mouth. Which is more dangerous. Please don't beat your husband though. God will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm talking about women who are listening to it online. Not all the women in the church. The women in the church are very gentle. I know them. They are very gentle. They are very good. So please, and please, Honor your children, honor your parents, honor everything, honor God. 
And God will honor you in return in the mighty name of Jesus. This year, God will give all the grace to honor him all the time, to give him thanks all the time in the mighty name of Jesus. And everything you are giving thanks to God concerning, they are not going to be reversal of it in the mighty name of Jesus. You will live to see the goodness of this land in this year in the mighty name of Jesus. And your name alone will be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, the Almighty God, we just want to thank you this morning. We honor you for your word that you have said unto us. Talk about sacrifice of thanksgiving. We pray, Father, the grace for us to offer this sacrifice on a daily basis. Father, give unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Magnify yourself in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Take us to the next level in our thanksgiving unto you this year in the mighty name of Jesus. And things of joy will not cease in our home in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because of answer our prayer. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.